So how do we determine that a patient is progressing on uh, first-line treatment? Uh, typically, we do uh, CAT scan imaging every two to three months. Uh, we follow blood work, liver function studies, and blood counts. Uh, and we see the patients and assess uh, symptoms. So certainly trigger signs would be the development of increasing fatigue or weight loss or abdominal pain or pain at the sites of known metastatic disease. So, uh, uh, and actually uh, clinical deterioration would certainly prompt us to get earlier imaging. Uh, it's always uh, challenging when we have a patient that's on frontline treatment and they're doing well symptomatically and their imaging shows progression uh, of disease. Then we have to determine, you know, is the progression of disease significant enough that we would change treatment? Uh, uh, certainly if we see substantial disease progression on imaging, even in the absence of symptoms, that would be a trigger to change to second line uh, treatment. In addition to clinical symptoms that were, are signaling progression uh, on first line therapy, we also have non-clinical uh, uh, signs that we can see. These include um, increasing tumor markers, for example. Um, we, we often follow tumor markers CEA and CA199. Um, and even if they're normal at the onset, at the newly diagnosed set, Thing. Occasionally, these will start to rise uh, over time on therapy, whether it be on full uh, doublet chemotherapy or even on maintenance therapy. Uh, in addition to that, um, of course, we're looking at scans, um, and we routinely do uh, imaging, uh, preferably CT scans, chest, abdomen, pelvis infused, uh, every eight weeks uh, or so. And so we will obviously be looking at that. So sometimes patients are progression, progressing on tumor markers and or scans without having clinical progression. Uh, and so these would be grounds for considering changing therapy. Uh, um, and then finally, there is the notion that we can even identify progression earlier than with these other, with clinical symptoms, uh, tumor markers, and CT scans, and that um, one day might be looking at CT DNA analysis in the blood by next generation sequencing. We know that we can identify um, this in the blood at baseline newly diagnosed patients in 85% or more of patients. Um, it, th there are a subgroup of patients that aren't shedding DNA. Those would be patients that are low tumor burden, um, and also patients with diffuse um, peritoneal disease only. Um, they don't have high levels in the blood. The vast majority, on the other hand, will have CTDA in the blood at baseline. And then over time, we know that with therapy, uh, most patients will have a drop in the CTDNA in the blood. It acts like a tumor marker. And then over time, though, when they're generating resistance, you will see that to start to rise. And we see that happen several months before we would see tumor markers rise, CT scans change, or symptoms. And so this would be another non-clinical way of identifying progression. But at this time, uh, we don't really use that to change therapy yet because there's not enough evidence to show that that would make much, uh, would change much. Um, but that, that's an area of investigation and um, potentially changing earlier may allow for continued control for longer by changing to a more effective therapy in the second line. But that remains to be, uh, to be proven as opposed to just waiting to our normal clinical methods, which are the tumor marker CT scan and clinical symptoms. The most important trigger to, to proceed from first line to second line treatment is disease progression. In gastric cancer, time to progression is unfortunately relatively short. So the majority of the patient experience disease progression within five months in the first line setting. So what we try to do is to um, be very cautious and perform MRI or CT scans to discover disease progression early and to switch the treatment um, or change the treatment to a second line treatment. In terms of planning the treatment or in terms of sequencing the treatment, I think that, um, uh, uh, that we should um, we should make a treatment plan which enable patients to receive as much treatment lines as appropriate for these patients because we know that that 
survival is longer when patients receive multiple treatment lines. And the scheduling is dependent on, on the previous therapy. So depending on the previous therapy, we plan the second line therapy and we try to use uh, drugs that, that are not completely cross resistant to the compounds the patient has received in, in, in the first line therapy or in the new event settings. 